This is 15 to 23. The call of Jeremiah. The word of the Lord came to me, saying, Before I formed you in the womb, I knew you. Before you were born, I set you apart. I appointed you as a prophet to the nations. Ah, sovereign Lord, I said, I do not know how to speak. I am only a child. But the Lord said to me, Do not say I, only, I am only a child. You must go to everyone I send you to and say whatever I command you. Do not be afraid of them, for I am with you and will rescue you, declares the Lord. Then the Lord reached out his hand and touched my mouth and said to me, Now I have put my words in your mouth. See, today I appoint you over nations and kingdoms to uproot and tear down, to destroy and overthrow, to build and to plant. May God add his blessing to the reading of his holy word. Let me turn to Ephesians chapter 1, verses 15 to 23. For this reason, ever since I heard about your faith in the Lord Jesus and your love for all God's people, I have not stopped giving thanks for you, remembering you in my prayers. I keep asking that the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the glorious Father, may give you the spirit of wisdom and revelation, so that you may know him better. I pray that the eyes of your heart may be enlightened in order that you may know the hope to which he has called you, the riches of his glorious inheritance in his holy people and his incomparably great power for us who believe. That power is the same as the mighty strength he exerted when he raised Christ from the dead and seated him at his right hand in the heavenly realms, far above all rule and authority, power and dominion, and every name that is invoked, not only in the present age, but also in the one to come. And God placed all things under his feet and appointed him to be head over everything for the church, which is his body, the fullness of him who fills everything in every way. Hear the word of God. Praise be to God in every dominion of his right. Let's just close our eyes for a moment and reflect on these words that we heard and that God himself will open his word to us. Amen. A man said to his neighbor, I just bought new hearing aids. They cost $4,000, but they're the best you can buy. Really? What kind are they? Replied his neighbor. The man answered, 1230. It wasn't that... He couldn't hear with the new hearing aid. It was just that he heard what he wanted to hear. A theologian by name Paul Tillich once said, The first duty of love is to listen. When God speaks and calls us, how well do we listen? Friends, it is a reality that there are many people who never respond to God's call. They would deliberately block out everything that would come to them in the line that God would call them. 
And you have to appreciate with me that in the time that we live, there are many calls that we receive, calls from a secular world, calls that can so easily draw us in. I once had a conversation with a man who learned that I'm a pastor. And he said to me, my wife and I used to attend church when we were just married, but through friends and work, we went on a different path. And he said, it seemed to us that the calling of those people became more important than God's call. And there, my friends, is a question that will confront each one of us every day of our lives till the very end of our lives. This question will confront us. Have you answered to the call of God in every aspect of your life? And this afternoon, we want to meditate on Jeremiah's calling. There is a term in theological circles that was so relevant in the prophet's life, and that is the term predestination. He was predestined by God long before he was born. We read in verse 5, Before I formed you in the womb, I knew you. Before you were born, I set you apart. I appointed you as the prophet to nations. You see, God had a wonderful plan for Jeremiah's life. His purpose in life wasn't just to be a man with a family and a profession. No, he was to become very prominent among God's people. God planned his life beforehand so that he would become a speaker, a preacher, a prophet of his word. And you see, it wasn't Jeremiah who first went to seek God, to try and find God. It was God who took the initiative, God who found him, God who appointed him. It was God's predestination. It was God's calling. You see, it's always God's calling. It's God's initiative. It's God's predestination for every person in His service. That is just the way God always operated from the beginning of time and how He will operate till the end of time. It was God who went to Moses at the burning bush and called him for a purpose. You see, Moses didn't have any intentions to go to Pharaoh and to tell him, let these people of God go. No, that prospect made him very nervous. It was just too much for him because he complained to God and he said, but Lord God, I cannot speak. And then we know how God told him, take your brother Aaron with you. He will speak for you. And Moses went, and he delivered the people. He led them through the wilderness. He was called for that purpose in his life. And when most unexpected Gideon was elected as one of the judges, and the prospects to him were not very promising. He didn't have any intentions for the task before him, because he complained to the Lord. He said, but I am the least of my people. But you see, God used him. And then, over time, God called people in his service, all the prophets in the Old Testament. And we read about the leaders who delivered God's people. They have been referred to as redeemers, not in any way close to our Redeemer, Jesus Christ, but they delivered the people of God. And so it went on and on. The call of God reached people. It reached evangelists, missionaries, pastors, so that 
they ended up in a missions field or they entered ministries. And if I call you or ask you to call out one of the most prominent evangelists of our modern time, I think most of you will say the Reverend Dr. Billy Graham. And on occasion, a reporter asked him, did you always have the intention, this vision, to take the word of God, the gospel, to other people? And Graham answered, I didn't have anything to do with that. It was God's calling. And I just answered God's call. But what we learn from the life of Jeremiah is that he demonstrated a very human characteristic. And that is to doubt your purpose in life. You see, he tried to find any reasons that would have indicated that he just couldn't do that, that he would not qualify. And he said, Alas, sovereign Lord, I do not know how to speak, for I am too young. I am a child. And many people in Jeremiah's time and after would have said and would still think today, it was just humility that he demonstrated when he added those words to God. Because just try and think of the mindset of Jeremiah at the time. Here I am, and God Almighty called me, but there is still so much I have to learn. The best thing for me would be to go to a real prophet and to become an apprentice. And then I can learn all the skills of how to represent God before people. You see, it's a human reaction to make excuses when God calls us to me, Lord. There must be someone far more competent than me, but Lord, you call me. But you see, friends, if there was one thing that God wanted to make so clear to Jeremiah was the fact, you are the man I'm calling. You are the one. And God didn't have any concerns about his lack of eloquent speech. God was going to put his own words in his mouth. You see, God is never concerned about our abilities. God is only concerned about the fact that we would make ourselves available in His service. On more than one occasion in the Old Testament we read where the question was asked when God called someone, whom shall we send? Who will go for us? I can think in particular of Isaiah chapter 6 when Isaiah had the calling of God in the temple, when he saw the holiness of God and when he cried out, Woe to me, I am doomed. And that the Lord asked, Whom shall we send? Who will go for us? And you see, that is a question that confronts you and me. That is a question that would go out to the farthest part of this world and where God would say, But who will accept my call? Who will know that his or her purpose in life is far more than own interests? You see, in this time, God wants us to make a stand for Him with all the voices that we hear in a secular world. In this time, we need to speak up when we hear worldly ideologies, ideologies, philosophies, and perceptions. In this time, we are called. In this time, we have to say, how am I going to respond? And you know, there are many people who would just not do that. Because Wednesday at our Bible study, we shared some thoughts about many people who would just put God's 
kingdom and God Himself and God's calling to them as one of the lowest priorities of their lives that it just doesn't matter anymore. As many people openly say in these days, we live in a post-Christendom. And that the concern is that many would just not do that. To answer, they decline God's call over and over and over again. And you know, they are just like the rich young man whom Jesus told, go and sell everything you own and come and follow me. But we know what his response was. He became sad. He just couldn't do it. He just couldn't part with the things that he thought were the purpose of his life. Riches and possessions. In this moment, God wants to know from you and from me what is your purpose in life? What is the highest priority before you? Is it to first seek the kingdom of God and its righteousness? And that means you answer to the call. Is it to first seek the kingdom of God and its righteousness and then to know that all the other things shall be added unto your life. And when we want to say, Lord, yes, here I am, we find the wonderful information, God called us to come to faith, God placed us on earth so that we can meet the Savior of the world, Jesus Christ, and then God calls us in His service. That's a wonderful affirmation. But still, we need to have something more. We need to have a better affirmation. And that affirmation is that God empowers us. God would just not call us and say, you are going to be on your own as you do this. No, God gave a wonderful affirmation to Jeremiah. And that is the affirmation that He gives to each one of us. And Jeremiah prophesied about this. Then the Lord said to me, Do not say, I am only a child. You have to go to whoever I sent you. And you have to say whatever I command you. Do not be afraid of them. For I am with you. I will rescue you. Then the Lord reached out His hand and touched my lips and said, Now I have put my own words in your mouth. That must have been a wonderful moment for Jeremiah. But it wasn't just for him. It was for all of the prophets. It was for the apostles Jesus called. It became a reality for all of God's people, all evangelists, all missionaries, all pastors. By the grace of God, all of us can say, God touched my lips so that I can speak in the name of Jesus because I do this in and through the power of God, the Holy Spirit. Friends, I can share with you that after more than 31 years in ministry, every thought and every word I speak can only come because the Holy Spirit of God gave it to me and will continue to give it to me. That with every prayer and every sermon, there came the wonderful affirmation. Now that I have touched your lips, I have put my own words in your mouth. And that is something that you can appreciate as well. Because I think if there's one thing that God would want to say to us in this moment, in this afternoon, it is, you are in no way different from Moses or Joshua or Isaiah, or Jeremiah. 
or Paul or Peter or anyone else because you received my spirit. And through my spirit, you will do wonderful things. You recall what Jesus told his disciples. You will do greater things since you now have received my spirit. And you know, there's something so precious to me what I sometimes remind myself of, of how we are empowered by God. And that is that disciples that spent three years with Jesus as he ministered, as he went from region to region, as he preached the gospel, as he spoke about the kingdom of his Father, as he healed the sick and gave sight back to the blind, those disciples hid themselves from authorities because of fear after the crucifixion. And then Jesus appeared to them, and Jesus told them, Receive the Holy Spirit. We have received the Holy Spirit. We should not feel inferior. We are more than conquerors. And therefore, we should never wait. We should answer the call of God as it comes to us, as often as it comes to us, that we would say, Here I am, Lord. I am available. Send me. I will go. I will not turn to the person next to me and say, but perhaps he or she is more equipped, more competent than me. No, I accept your call. I will answer each time you come to me. Amen. Let us pray.